The second release of Foundry VTT version 11 is here, and it includes a revamped setup and world login pages, compendium folders, and much more. Hi everyone, my name is Fondu. I run this channel called Dice and Easy, where I give you Foundry VTT tutorials and news, TTRPG tips and tricks, and daily TTRPG memes as YouTube shorts. So if you like any of that stuff, hit that subscribe button down there. As you may be aware, Foundry version 11 is currently in development with version 10 being the latest stable version that most people are using. And this release is a prototype version, which means that it is very unstable with big new features. And it is intended to test these new features out in a robust way so that they can be improved and bugs can be fixed and for developers to prepare their modules for when version 11 rolls out so that they have module updates ready to go. And just a brief reminder on the process that usually a version of Foundry VTT goes through. So first you have prototype versions, one, two, maybe three of them where new big features are added and things break a lot because of new things that are introduced into Foundry. After that, we get into the development stage where no more new big features are added and mostly polishing the existing features and bug fixes. Then we get into the testing phase, which is only bug fixing, critical bugs. And then we get to the stable version, which is then the version that most people are going to be using. There might be some bugs here and there, but that is the stable version as it were. With that out of the way, let's have a look at what prototype two of Foundry VTT version 11 has in store. All right, I'm gonna be reading a little bit more off my screen than usual because there's a lot of technical details that I wanna get right. But as I mentioned, the first thing that we're gonna have a look at is the revamped setup and world login pages. Now these are the landing pages of when you come onto Foundry, the first thing that you see. So both of these have gotten a big UI overhaul. Let's talk about the setup page. So there's a new layout with responsive design, a news section to showcase Foundry related news and updates to you. Then there's there's also a featured content section which will allow Foundry to highlight community content including modules, art asset adventures, etc. so that you know you can have an idea of what is happening in the Foundry ecosystem in the community. Then there are currently buttons that are repeating in several sections of the setup page. These have now all been moved into a single context menu and warnings and errors are now in an error log of its own that is a button at the top right corner. Very handy, very nice. Then let's talk about the world login page. As I mentioned, it has also gotten a revamped new design. You have two different views that you can choose from now. The default view, which is the current style of view with all the world information, etc., or a simplified view that only has the login parts. So if you want to keep it simple for your players, then you can only have the login part visible. That's quite nice. Then the next big feature is compendium folders. That means that compendium packs can now contain folders. This has been a long requested feature and it is finally coming to Foundry Core. So this makes it possible to import and export folders between your world and compendium while keeping your documents organized. You can also search, collapse and expand compendium folders just like in the sidebar and interact with documents contained within them in the same way. Side note also, the number of possible nested folders in the sidebar has now been increased from three to four. A nice little addition there. And then next up we have the Pixies upgrade. So pixie.js, which is the canvas rendering engine and library that Foundry VTT relies upon, has been upgraded to the next major version, which is Pixie version 7. With this upgrade, mouse interaction workflows have been overhauled to use the new engine, which brings improvements to performance using the canvas. Also upgrading to Pixie version 7 adds new powerful features that improve API capabilities for module developers and improve performance for end users. If you're a module developer whose module modifies the canvas, you'll want to read up on the Pixie version 7 migration in the patch notes because it's going to impact you. Then next up, we have updating the grandkids. It sounds a little bit funny, but bear with me. So in prototype one of Foundry version 11, the database system that Foundry relies on, level DB, was updated and now that allows for grandchild embedded documents and other nested documents to be created, read, updated and deleted in the same way as their parent documents without having to process the update through their parent. Uh, so what does that mean in practice? Well, this means that, for example, the active effect on your magic sword can be updated directly without having to go through the parent. 
Then we have opt-in statistics. With version 11, users will be asked on first launch if they want to send anonymous data to Foundry about their Foundry VTT usage. This anonymous data is meant to improve Foundry development, but is completely optional. Foundry has said that privacy is very important to them, and they have updated their privacy policy in EULA to reflect this new anonymous data gathering. And they have a Q&A for this data collection in the patch notes, and you can find a link to the patch notes in the description below. Then lastly, a large number of small features like new weather effects, improvements to threshold walls, improved data compression to facilitate loading on slower internet connections, and much more have been added in this prototype to a version 11 of Foundry VTT. If you want to see in more detail what is in prototype 2 of Foundry version 11, I have left a link to the patch notes below in the description. Of course, all of this still includes the features that were in the first prototype of Foundry version 11. Those haven't gone anywhere. If you don't know what is in the first prototype, I have a video about that. You should check that out. I'm going to leave a link in the lower, in the upper that corner. So you can get directly there and see what the first prototype has in store. All right, that's it. Those are all the new things that are coming to Foundry version 11 in the second prototype. I am excited for the next version of Foundry. As you probably know, I love Foundry and I love using Foundry. I think it's a great piece of software and they've done a fantastic job with it. And I can't wait for version 11 with all the performance enhancements that are coming in and the wonderful new features. What do you think about Foundry version 11? Are you excited? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. And while you're down there, a like and subscribe would really be appreciated as this channel is a passion project of mine and I'm trying to grow it to become bigger. I also stream on twitch.tv slash dice and easy every Monday and Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern European Standard Time. And I would love to have you over there to talk about TTRPGs and Foundry VTT, among other things. All right, and on the screen right now, you're gonna see another video of mine, which is going to be the prototype one video of Foundry version 11. You should definitely check that out to understand all the new things that are coming to Foundry version 11. All right, thank you very much for this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.